Washington threat? Because we've heard that Coruscant is sort of focused on having another aviation catastrophe and that they have created things such as non-metallic bombs that can't be detected, explosive clothing somehow that can be ignited midair, toothpaste bombs. But the fact that we know about all of this and that we went after Coruscant, doesn't that tell you that we're one step ahead of them? Well, it tells you that the intelligence community is doing a pretty good job. And they're doing much, much better than they were in September of 2001. Um, and that's where this stuff is coming from. So the more we can capture, the more we can gain, um, the better off we're going to be. Can we go back to this question about another 9-11 type of attack? And Tom Fuentes, I, I sort of cut you off mid-thought mid there. But when you, when you talk about this Elf Oddly guy, which was part of the Coruscant, but was also a 9-11 operative, even with someone like that, you still don't think that a 9-11 type incident is possible now? No, I was trying to say, Don, the, the international financing, coordination, command, and control that's required for a major coordinated attack that requires specialized training for many of the terrorists involved in it, such as how to fly the plane into a building, uh, it really is going to be very difficult for them to pull off. And if, you know, the, one of the key things that I took away, when bin Laden was killed in Pakistan, you know, it was by following a courier back to him. Now, this is a guy that had run, you know, the biggest, baddest terror organization on the earth, and he was reduced to trying to run it by courier. So you can't conduct a global terror attack by Pony Express in the modern era. You need to be able to have an ability to communicate internationally, finance it internationally. And I think that that part's much more difficult. And I think that's why now they're willing to settle for the lone wolf and give us that death by a thousand cuts. And the other advantage to that strategy is that it makes people vulnerable in the heartland. Instead of just New York City or just Washington, D.C., you can be anywhere and the guy next door can turn into a jihadist and, and blow up the bus stop or the cafeteria or, you know, and it only kills two, three, four people. How tolerant are we going to be of that? And just like the arrest of the FBI okay. last week, the guy in I'm Rochester, New York, who would have expected that? I wonder, do you, do you guys agree? With that? I think we should not underestimate that, that they would try and, and, and launch more major uh, attacks. This would be more difficult for them to do it. The United States and other Western powers are much more vigilant uh, than they uh, were before. Uh, but they're still going to try and do this. They're still going to try and attack uh, aviation, perhaps multiple airliners. We saw that back in 2006, a plot to target up to... 10 transatlantic airliners from al-Qaeda in Pakistan. Uh, so now that al-Qaeda is based in Syria with all this potential capability, all these Western recruits, I think we're going to see them try this again. Paul, I also want to ask you about some developing news that we got about five hours ago, that the airstrikes last night in Syria killed one of the leaders of al-Nusra. CNN has not been able to independently confirm that, but there was a tweet that al-Nusra put out saying that one of their leaders had been killed. Here it is in Arabic. What do you know about this? Jabhat al-Nusra put this out. This is uh, Yusuf al-Turki. He's a mid-level mid commander, not a key leader in the group. Mm. So not a big deal? Not a huge deal. Obviously, any time you can get one of these people, uh, it, it can make a difference. Why are they publicizing this? They're saying al-Turki was martyred. He was the sixth best sniper in the world. One of He's the damning lines him with fake praise yeah. there, one of the lines of jihad. Why are they putting, why are they putting They, they want to celebrate him. For them, he's a martyr figure. Uh, by celebrating his, his death, they believe he's now in paradise. They're trying to get more recruitment. So here's what I want to talk to you. When you, and quite honestly here, when you talk to many counterterrorism officials, when you talk to many military officials, they will tell you, and they have told me in person, I, you know, we think there is an imminent, something will happen very soon, within the next year, within the next two years, within the next five years, there's going to be a major event. You guys come here on camera, no one will say that. Why is that? Okay, I, I, wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say there's not going to be. And I don't think, personally, I don't think there's going to be another airline flying planes into buildings. But I just said a major event. You want a major event? Uh, no. No, we don't want a major event, okay. but I'm saying, but why, think why, do, why do you Four guys say that? Four or five lone wolves on the same day, same time, around the country, you, that will be a major, major event that's going to have a major economic impact. It's going to have a major impact, negative impact on the psyche of this country, and that can be done. 